fashion is really what you see everywhere in every store, every boutique all over, fancy, middle class store or whatever. Uh, the style is different because that's what you have in your closet, but I know that you're referring to, to fashion in general, fashion in general, and how I got into it. You know, I like to be unique and I like people to be unique. So the real, real fashion, you know, I really started when I was seven years old making sewing pants and I learned how to cut them and <coughs> excuse me, how to, how to do it kind of all light. Started making shirts, dresses, jackets, skirts, and, you know. Once I got into it, I just, I just went on forever, it seems to me. The, the thing that I consider really like fashionable thing, it really started when I was seven. The minute I learned how to make pants the ordinary way, I immediately kind of veered away from it. I, I took the tangent and I got to do my own thing. I just didn't think I would ever be a copier. You know, it takes a little sweat to learn But once I got it, I said, I'm going to make it kind of my own industry, you know, my own thing, but in the high, high, more impressive format. Actually, I started doing it in California. Because in Mexico, I would do the ordinary, no rhinestones, no embroidery stuff but the fabrication was so distinct to, to, to what existed at the time. And I liked it so much that I ventured into the United States, not as a, as a fountain of income or a dream or something like that. But I was really chasing a rainbow that I, that was really to be many colors and many styles. As far as the clientele and how I, a lot of people always ask, how come, hey, Manuel, explain me, how do you get to these people that you have dressed? The truth is that it's all been, and I repeat this all the time, sweet serendipity. I've been there at the right place, at the right time, with the right people. And uh, my store right now, what I have here, what I had in, in two or three occasions, a little retail place. This is like a candy store. So my shop has always been like that. And uh, I wish I could say I just do it for love. No, I pay rent with it and I pay employees, and, you know. Uh, it is, it is expensive to make clothes like this. If it's really high quality or, or you know, we, we always have that challenge of trying to approach the best. I know it's unattainable, but we always try to do the best we can. You have that beautiful challenge, you know, and it's, it's just amazing that uh, once you get it, when I get the concept in my head, I just want it. So it doesn't take long. I, I always, I always dream of my design. I mean, like, to tell you the truth, and I am not really sure if I dream my design, or I am actually awake, just laying in bed, creating. You know, because I have no time to think. I have only have time to absorb what I see, what people talk about, and, or 
uh, I will alter many things that I, everything is inspirational because I make things especially right now at my age, the age that I have now. I make pieces that I, I wouldn't, I really don't care if people buy it or not. I want to keep them. For what reason? I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm senile. You know, I just love what I do. And, and to me, every piece, or as you guys call them, creation, every one of those pieces are like my children. I love people, and I want to make them pretty when they're looking for something, you know. or make them unique, maybe. Maybe that's what it is. I want to make them unique. I remember in California, we were three boys, young and full of life, using the same fabric, doing the exact manufacturing. the same quality of fabric and sewing. So we made the, exactly the same article, let's say a, a shirt. I don't know if this will tell you something about my branding and why, why I was impulsed to do better than anyone. The, the price, I mean the shirts were like 59, 95, and mine were 250. And I learned this from Coco Chanel. So I was inspired by the way she marked up things. And the way she treated the very humble manufacturing like Satan at a sewing machine or standing cutting table, you know what I mean, and turn it into an art piece. And as I was telling you about my friends, I mean, two years later, I looked to my side and I never saw them. They never made it. And I thought that that was the reason why. You need to believe in you, 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 you need to believe in your quality, I gotta meet everybody. I meet wonderful people like Mr. Henry Fonda, like Mr. Richard Harris, Gregory Peck. So many other people, other walks of life, like kings, queens. You know. I'm interested. I joke about it because I say, yeah, yeah. What, who do you actually dress? I trust everybody, you know? Kings, queens, presidents of this country, governors, mayors. Fashion was not my dream. You know. Medicine was my dream, but I never got there. And not because I was poor, and not because I didn't have the opportunity, not because of anything, because I got entertained doing something that, that was like a calling to me. You know? And I've been there but you can't do it all, you know. And, uh, you know, it's, I am happy. Never had a headache in my life. I never had a hangover in my life. I mean, I'm the happiest guy. As far as I know, all I know, and I am thankful for, like I said before, is to have learned from God to be just a simple person. And I don't want to be any, any, not even a hair ahead of that. 